have a lot of passion for what you're doing. This rings true because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, and if you're not having fun doing it, you're going to give up. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of John's Entitled Podcast, a partner of MoshPitNation.com. This episode's guest is Kevin Ivoroni from Old Wounds, and that was a, a rather hard name to, to get because the enunciation sometimes makes me want to put the emphasis in the wrong parts. And uh, a man who always makes me want to put the emphasis on the wrong parts is my co-host, Mr. Daniel Terry. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing fantastic, man. <laughs> I have so much fun doing these. With an intro like that, I mean, I can't, you know, can't complain about anything. <laughs> That's it. Show's over. Yeah. Ten Good night, everybody. Ten out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I uh, had the pleasure of talking to uh, Kevin, and Kevin is someone I've actually been trying to get on the podcast for a while. Um, you know, he went through some shit and basically ended up leaving Old Wounds right after I really saw the band for the first and only time. Uh, they opened for Beartooth, which, I mean, I made a lot of references to that tour and things happening around that time, but it was a very, uh, I don't necessarily know if tumultuous would be the word I'd want to use, but there was a lot of shit that happened with the band and with Kevin specifically uh, that ultimately led to him deciding it was time to step away from the band. And a lot of, the band was making a lot of headway at that point. I mean, you're opening for Every Time I Die and Beartooth, a band that's arguably one of the most storied bands in the hardcore scene over the last yeah. 20 years. Yeah. And then you have the new upstart band, you know, Beartooth. You know, a lot of people are starting to take notice of that band. They're becoming, they are a legit headlining band of their own. Starting they're, to. They're huge now. I mean, yeah. Around this time was like, you know, when they still were in the, I think they were on. I think it was like two records ago, maybe. Um, not sure off the yeah. top of my head. But it was one of those things where, you know, it was crazy to see Beartooth headlining in, in the space that they were already, um, given the fact that, you know, they're still a relatively young band. Um, and for those who haven't checked out Disease, uh, it's a really solid record. Go go pick that up. Um, anyway, though, having seen Kevin and, and Old Wounds on that tour, uh, I walked away being a fan. I mean, it's if you're into kind of nasty and just – a lot of riffs and breakdowns and, you know, just nasty it's, vocals and shit. It's really good. It's piss and vinegar hardcore. I mean, when <laughs> your opening track on your The Suffering Spirit uh, album is called uh, Rest in Piss, I mean, what more do you need to know? Right. I mean, it's that is really a guilty pleasure of mine is that it's not old school hardcore because it's very modern, but it's, it's so dirty and gritty. It just kind of reminds me of, like, listening to some of my first hardcore records. I don't know. I get that vibe. I don't know if you did or not. Kind of more, kind of more of an old school vibe, with not necessarily having an old school sound. If that makes sense. No, oh, totally. I think you're seeing starting to see that a lot more. I mean, you look at a band like Power Trip, or I would even say, actually, Power Trip. I think is one of the better examples, just as a whole. Yeah. Um, they have that classic kind of thrashy hardcore. It's almost like if you somehow were to take a more modern up. I don't even. Again, I don't even know if modern is the word. To a mod like a modern day. Motorhead, like if Motorhead started in the last like seven years, yeah, I think Power yeah. Trip is what it would be. So gritty, yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of the the grittiness and a lot of the the rawness that you hear in Old Wounds is I I have to assume it's because of where they come from, which is New Jersey, and it's just kind of a, a really uh, I don't know if I want to say it's a dirty city or anything like that, but I think you know. <laughs> Well, I'm always reminded. Let's get that on tape. It yeah. is, in fact, a dirty city. Well, I think the thing for me is whenever you know coming from the East Coast and one of the uh, myself, one of the things that I always remember is this joke. Uh, I think it was in a movie too, um, but it was like if uh, if Jersey's so great, then why is the Statue of Liberty turn her back to it? <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny so I've always it's, true. it's it's just always one of those things where uh, you know it's nothing against people in Jersey it's nothing against uh, how it is but I think you know like Pittsburgh you think of Pittsburgh and, and, and even I would say like Philly like they are you know rough and tumble gritty cities and I think as a result some of the people and bands that come out of it 
showcase that same vibe. And I think Old Wounds definitely showcases that. And the thing that's refreshing about it, though, from a, a visual perspective, is is what Kevin brings to the band. He is a, sh- a front man and a show person in every sense of the word. And, you know, in this interview, we kind of talk about some of his influences ranging from, you know, James Hart from 18 visions, which I mean, when those dudes first came out, like, you know, the guy liner, the tight pants and, you know, just the look they had, the fashion core and all that stuff. And, you know, talking about Davey Havoc from AFI, like, you know, that was a dude who had a a very distinct look to even, you know, a guest that's on their new record, uh, glow, which is out now, uh, has been out since last Friday. Um, you know, via Good Fight Music, which, I mean, fucking solid record, which, how could it not be? It's basically is from the ashes of Ferret Music, so right. Ferret basically put out some of the best records of my youth, and I think Good Fight is basically putting out good music for someone else's youth, or uh, me trying to still hold on to mine, but... Uh, oh, Good Fight's in it for me, man. They had the Chariot for a long time, until mm-hmm. they broke up. They had, um, they reissued all the In Flames records, and one of my one of my all-time favorite bands is on Good Fight, uh, or they were, I think they still are, is uh, The Contortionist. I think they still are, yeah. Yeah, the interesting thing about this conversation for me, though, like I said, is uh, I really wanted to have Kevin on. I think he's a very interesting person who has a lot of interests that are interesting. Um, but with that being said, you know, the the reasons that he ended up leaving the band, it was it was very weird. Like, you know, in this day and age, with the internet being what it is and and 24 hour news cycles and such, when someone decides to leave a band, even if it's amicably like all the details about it are out, whether it be through the person's social media, the band's, you know, press release, uh, you know, and especially in light of, you know, last week when who was a bad omens got in trouble for or deciding that they didn't want to be on a tour because the font was not big enough. And then you have the owner of the label going to bat for them and being like, Oh, the, census fail guys and whatever the other band was are bullies and all this kind of shit it's like okay um, oh my god your majesty sorry yeah so you know it's one of those things though that in light of that like that's a great example like what just started off as bad omens is off this tour and then it was you know census fails like well yeah the, we regret to inform you this band's off the tour or they are no longer on the tour because they just weren't happy with the size of the font of how they were on the the ad mat which is the poster um, and then it turned into the other band commenting on the same thing. Then it turned into the owner of Sumerian who bad omens is on commenting. Then it turned into bad omens making a press release. And ma- and then the thing that I thought was really fucking weird about it was making a t-shirt with the small font or the small thing that apparently they've been bitching about as a t-shirt that you can buy right now. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's not really the way to handle this. But all of that aside, the reason I bring that up is like that's a perfect example how a very small thing was shared and discussed between four or five different media accounts, countless media outlets, and was a, a huge story. And it's like I remember when Kevin exited the band, it's like, well, I'm leaving because I'm just tired of touring and I want to focus on my – career in cosmetology and haircutting and all that and i need to go to school and it's like totally understandable i get that it's just weird that you would do it at this point then you come to find out once he rejoins the band that it's like well i was dealing with crohn's like i'd never told anyone i had this and it's like right to me it's like in light of like you know how long have we all known that daryl from glassjaw has crohn's and that's why the band doesn't tour a whole lot and that's why you know, like he's kind of become this advocate for for Crohn's. Like I, I never would have known about Crohn's if I wasn't a Glassjaw fan. Honestly, right. that's true. Me too. That was my first uh, exposure to it. I think having people like Daryl and people like Kevin, I think are, you know, those can can be those people for Crohn's. And to me, it's like it was kind of a bummer. A spoiler alert to the interview, but you know, kind of a bummer to hear that he was afraid to admit that he had Crohn's because he was afraid that it was going to make him appear weak. Yeah. It's so weird. Right. Cause it's just, it's weird. It's weird that the things that you tell yourself, the people are going to think, yeah. I don't think any, I don't think anybody would have been like, you know, Oh no, I don't, he's got Crohn's. He sucks. Like, I don't right. know. I, but at the same time, when you're skipping tours, you're missing shows or or you're having to cancel things or whatever, 
stuff like that actually makes you look worse. Yeah. Because people aren't aware, you know, that you actually do have a debilitating disease and it's a real thing. Um, and it's just, it's hard because nobody wants to admit that they have a disease. Right. Well, at least a real disease. We had a whole other conversation with a whole different guest about that whole entire subject. <laughs> But yeah, um, I guess that's really as good a spot as any to uh, get into my chat with Kevin from Old Wounds, and we will talk to you afterwards. I have the pleasure of talking to Kevin Ivoroni today, the vocalist of Old Wounds, who have a new record coming out tomorrow, Glow, November 9th, uh, via Good Fight Music. Uh, it sounds like you're at a, a nice little diner uh, somewhere in Illinois. Hi, yeah, we're, uh, we're, at, we're at a Starbucks, not uh, a diner. Well, but, they, have, they have food. <laughs> yeah, no, they, 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 they have food. Most of it we can't eat, but yeah, we come here, we come here for the coffee. Coffee? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm going to kind of jump right into these things with you. Um, you know, a lot uh, has happened since the uh, the Suffering Spirit came out three years ago uh, with yeah. the band and with yourself. Um, for th- those who may not be aware, uh, you had left the band for about a year, if I'm correct? Um, it didn't take that long. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So I left. I left the band after the Beartooth tour in preparation of hair school and towards the end of uh, some pretty pretty extensive touring cycles. Um, I was having some issues with my uh, my illness, which is Crohn's mm-hmm. Crohn's disease, and uh, it just at the time made sense that I should probably take care of myself, take care of my health. But it didn't take long for the guys to convince me that I belonged on the road with them. And here we are, lo and behold, here we are again. <laughs> so the the kind of interesting thing and in, in kind of looking back at that time, because it, as I was saying right before I was talking, you know, started this, uh, officially, you know, I had seen you on that Bear 2 tour and the thing that was kind of interesting is initially the – I don't know if you want to call it a press release, but the the word was basically that you were leaving, burned out from being on the road, and then going to finish cosmetology school. Sure. And the thing that was kind of interesting is I think it was Revolver and maybe a handful of other publications that ended up when you announced that you were coming back. You know, Then it was announced that Crohn's disease was – also a factor in the decision to to not be involved with abandoned touring and it kind of made me wonder you know in light of you know i don't know if advocate is the word but people like daryl from glassjaw who have been struggling with this disease basically his whole obviously his whole life but i mean the whole life of the band and people being aware of how it affects people especially singers and so forth um why yeah why not kind of come out with that and just be like hey look like i've <laughs> y'all may not know this but i've been dealing with this thing and it's it's a real motherfucker yeah it's 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 something i've been i've been struggling with since i was a little kid um it's just something i i, I didn't think that I, I wanted to to bring into light um i didn't want that to, to seem as if like oh i i'm, I'm sick I, I, I didn't want, I didn't want people to pity me in any sort of way. It's not about, it's not about the pity. It's, it's just something that I didn't, I didn't find that I should bring to everyone else's attention. And I made it, I made my initial statements being more so about focusing on career and my life. But you know, my life, my life is the band and. During during the time when I was about to leave, I was going through a whirlwind emotion whirlwind of emotions. I was I was dealing with the Crohn's flare up. Um, 
as you know, playing in a band, there's always going to be inner turmoil. There's always going to be the rubbing of elbows. Not everyone's going to agree on everything. So basically, I was I was at wit's end with with everything that was going on in my life, not just the band. I felt like I needed to take some time off um, and make myself better and kind of kind of figure figure my life out. But it didn't take long for me to put things into perspective because shortly after I had left, uh, I was hospitalized and I needed to have emergency surgery. Um, so shortly after I left, I was hospitalized. I had to get emergency surgery. What had happened was I had so much inflammation in my intestines that they had actually formed a knot and turned on its side and oh, wow. I needed to have exploratory emergency surgery. My doctor had saved my life. I was in excruciating pain and after the surgery, he told me that if I had not gone to the hospital that night, I would have died. So toxic shock. I was in. <laughs> everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, it was a surreal experience. Definitely one of my weakest points of life. And after the surgery, you know, since the surgery was performed by a non crone specialist, after the surgery, I was highly sedated, highly medicated, and it didn't, it didn't seem like the inflammation wanted to go away. So we kind of figured out that it wasn't just inflammation. There was a lot of scar tissue in there that was never going to go away. So I had about two inches of, no, not, not two inches. I'm sorry. Way more than that. <laughs> I had about two feet oh, shit. of my intestines removed. Um, that was all, all scar tissue. Um, but yeah, last year was a very, very interesting year for me. Uh, <laughs> very, very uh, all over the place and sort of emotions and feelings and mental and physical health. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, I had kind of read some of that and it's, it's kind of crazy because, you know... <sighs> It's it's hard to for me to say this because I'm not in your position, nor am I in in a touring band's position. So like when I say this, I I understand like there's a lot of variables that I can't put myself into. But you know when I when I read that story and I kind of learned more about what was going on with you, it kind of made me identify it and kind of like instead of feeling like it's you know kind of what you were saying where you feel like it kind of is like pity like you didn't want the pity or anything like that to me i was like wow you know this is someone somebody else who's doing this and can kind of talk about it on a different level and i not desensitize it or normalize it but i mean it's like you know one of the first things i thought of when i read that initially was thinking of like freddie mercury it's like freddie mercury you know had aids could have raised so much more awareness made more you know, use the platform he had to, to be able to bring this thing to light so more people are aware of what it is and how, you know, it affects people so that maybe people who don't know that they have it or, you know, whatever, can go get the help that they may need. And so to me, it was one of those things where it's like, man, I would feel like for, especially as a vocalist and someone who likes to get, you know, their word and message out there, that this would be something that, you know, you would want to be kind of an advocate for a little bit. I, I've definitely seen that firsthand and with me coming out and saying publicly, hey, I have Crohn's disease. This is what it's like to be on the road. This is what it's like to be in my shoes every day. Since, since I've, you know, come out and, and stated that, you know, I get, I get reached, people reach out to me every day that suffer from Crohn's, colitis, any sort of chronic illness. You know, last night, kids were coming up to me telling me that, they, they suffer from chronic illnesses and, they, and, and that they felt that I gave them some sort of support and some power through, through the music that we play. And that, that to me is very special to hear because for a very long time, I was in so much pain and, and suffering that I just didn't, didn't want to 
you know, when I closed my eyes at night, I didn't want to wake up the next day. So hearing hearing people say that I give them some sort of strength and and I help them cope in a way that's one of one of the the coolest things ever. It, it's just like a, a a full circle type thing that that's happening right now and in the moment, especially with the new album coming out. And obviously, a lot of the lyrical content on the album is very personal and, and touches upon me and my illness. So, I was going to say some of the song titles kind of made me wonder if that was the case. Like, you know, there was a, what was it? Uh, Give your pain a name. Give a name to your pain. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. And uh, so it was one of those, like kind of seeing song titles like that. It's like, huh, I wonder if there's a little bit more exploration is into that on this record than maybe there has been so head on previously. Sure, I, mean, the, the, I feel like it's my job as a, a vocalist to ever reinvent myself and keep expanding on certain things and it, the lyrical content may not be as straightforward as it once was. A lot of it is more so in metaphors now, but these are the most personal lyrics that I've ever written and they're very, very important to me. And so far the response to these songs have, have been really sweet. And, uh, I appreciate everyone that has given it a chance thus far because of how personal it is. You know, uh, it was kind of interesting today when listening to the, like I said earlier, the, the link didn't necessarily work for me. So, um, I think it was a song to kill for that kind of has like a very a different vibe for you guys than yeah. I think most people are were maybe thinking would be on, on a record of your guys's. And I know yeah. in interviews that you had done around the time of the Beartooth tour, so we're going back a handful of years, you know, you collectively the band had kind of talked about how they were going to or you all were going to kind of write songs that maybe were going to challenge your fans a little bit more than that for you sure. had. And so, you know, since this is one of the two songs that you've released already off of Glow, what has the reaction been to that song? And what can fans expect? I mean, we're a day away from the record coming out, but what can fans expect as far as other, uh, not leaps, but more exploratory type things that you're doing on this record that maybe fans wouldn't have thought of? When when I listen to music, I always find it interesting when, when bands and artists don't necessarily cater to their fan bases. You know, they, they, they don't, they're not writing the same stuff over and over and over again. And, you know, we had some lineup changes, but the goal was always the same that, you know, we need to reinvent ourselves. We need to, we need to stay grounded where, you know, realize where we come from, the, the subculture and the scene that we come from, always acknowledge that, but, expand on it and grow on it and build on it and to kill for it it, it, it may seem like an, an oddball song um it's because it's very it's very pop driven you know it's it's very melodic um but that just comes with the addition of ben playing guitar because he has a way of capturing melody um and it i've just wanted I've been wanting to sing more on these songs. I've been wanting to sing on Old Moon songs, not just yell. I've been wanting to sing since the beginning. And it's just something I've always kind of threw in there, here and there, but now it's it's definitely more prevalent and more, more there to be to be heard on the on the latest release. Um, but I don't think kids will be shocked or surprised by the amount of melody that there is on the new record. It's it's kind of funny because uh, I think I had <laughs> one of the interviews of yours that I had watched just to kind of get a, an idea of how you are being interviewed and so forth uh, was actually one that kind of focused more on makeup and so forth. Sure. And... Like, I don't think that was around the Beartooth tour as well. I think you did a lot of press on the Beartooth tour, I'm noticing. Um, we, we did, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but all that aside, you know, obviously one of the influences I think that you have and said you had as a, as a maybe as far as fashion, but also as a vocalist, I think would be safe to say Davy Havoc of AFI. Sure. And it's interesting to me because Davy, when I kind of heard that, I was like, you know, I always kind of thought aesthetically there was kind of this androgynous kind of look that you had that Davy had as well. And I haven't really seen done in this realm since, you know, early AFI and so forth. But what was kind of interesting to me, too, when thinking about that is thinking about how Davy has taken a lot of leaps uh, growing as a vocalist himself and what he does. And yeah. so to me, it was kind of like a almost like an aha epiphany moment where I was like, well, of course, like the band would kind of start going down some of these roads with melodies and so forth, because AFI did that. And I think, you know, some fans only like the band the early nitro years and so forth and i'm one of those people by the time they got to sing the sorrow and beyond i'm like okay the band learned how to write songs and like not punk songs but like songs we we, we really focused a lot on the songwriting on the, on the new record we really spent a lot of time uh making sure that we were satisfied um you know we had some lineup changes and ben was was going to join our band initially as a second guitar player, but it just ended up now we're playing as a four piece with him as our as our sole songwriter, and it and it just it's been the most organic that it's ever been uh, as far as songwriting goes. You know, I, I don't I don't have to be there much other than to put a melody over some choruses and and things like that, but. He, he'll present a song that he writes and I'll always find it to be perfect the way it is. I'm never like, oh, you know, we should change this part. You know, he, him and I are pretty in tune with, with influences and how we want our band to sound. So it's, it's actually uh, the best that it's ever been as far as songwriting goes. But uh, I think if you want to be in a band and have some longevity in it, you, you need to reinvent yourselves. You can't always do the same exact thing. And we, we found that to be very important. And Glow is just a step in that direction where we just, we're songwriters. We're not just taking bits and pieces of these heavy parts and breakdowns and just to cater to young kids that like heavy music. And don't get me wrong, we love heavy music too, but... There's a million bands that can do that. There's right. not so many. There's not so many bands these days that can build off of that and become something else. Do you think that the time away, you and the in the lineup changes and everything that was happening before this record was done, written, and all that kind of stuff, do you feel like that that extra time really allowed you to focus on what you wanted the record to be and make the most? old wounds record that you guys could make absolutely I, I can't speak for everyone else but i had a lot of time to think about the lyrics that i was writing you know i had two major surgeries i spent a lot of time in the hospital i spent a lot of time in my bed recovering and i was wallowing in all sorts of emotions and these feelings and they were ready you know, and I was ready with pen in hand to to write some of the most important songs I think I'll ever write. But everyone has grown as musicians. Uh, you know, Matt, who was playing guitar during the the Bear Tooth tour, is his first instrument is drums, and it just so happened, you know, with whatever was going on with the band lineup changes and he slipped right into the position of playing drums and he, he he's a master of the craft he can play guitar boy can he play guitar but <laughs> his first instrument is drums and he he's a machine he hits just as hard as Dave Grohl but he can be technical about it and it's it's really fun playing with Matt behind the drums and you know every everyone has grown as 
as as a musician since since then. You know, Mikey with his bass playing. I think we've just all come a long way. We're not just you know kids that want to play basement shows anymore necessarily, but. It would seem that uh, I don't want to call it a wake up call, but it would seem like just the unsureness, which I know is not a word, uh, <laughs> of the band and, and what you all went through. I think kind of reinvigorated you all and strengthened the bond of the band. Absolutely. And like I said, between the part of the song I heard and the couple of songs that I've already listened to um, that are already out, it's like I just kind of get, like I said, a sense of like. This is the, this is really the, the, I don't want to say the first representation of what Old Wounds is, but I think what Old Wounds can be from here on going forward. Wow, thank you. I mean, to me, this is the representation that I would like people to believe is Old Wounds. Um, just because I, you know, I'm so proud of the stuff that we've done. I'm, I'm proud of everything that we've done. But like I said, this this record is very personal for me. So for people to be as, you know, excited as I am about it and people are buying the record and coming out to these shows and they've been super, super supportive. And I, I can't ask for anything more than that. Um, so if anyone's listening, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> uh, shifting gears a little bit and kind of in winding down, um, so it's funny, you and I have tried to do this for a little while and just basically been playing life tag, like where you're busy with shit, school, whatever. And, you know, it was kind of funny when I initially was trying to get a hold of you, it was because you were going to school with Jay Pepito and yeah. I had just got done doing an interview with him. And then he was like, well, I go to school with Kevin. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's so amazing. it's, uh, it's kind of interesting and always has been like cosmetology and, and you know, hair, hairstyling and so forth was something that I was interested in for a while and just never really pursued uh, due to it being an oversaturated job market. Um, yeah. Especially. It definitely, it definitely is oversaturated. Um, which seems to be everything I want to do. Psychiatry, sociology, all that kind of stuff. It's like dime a dozen. Um, and so it was one of those things, you know, in thinking about, you know, going back to some of the earlier bands that I was into, you know, like your 18, like, 18 Visions, Bleeding Through, so on and so forth. Uh, even, like I said, going back to old AFI, it's like a lot of these bands and a lot of the dudes in the bands had a look, you know, were kind of... I don't know if gender bending is the word I'm looking for, but, you know, kind of doing things that weren't... No one really had done the way that these people were doing it. And especially Absolutely. once you kind of look at, you know, someone like James Hart, you know, who is a hairstylist by trade now, like that is his profession. Um, yeah, okay. And James, it's one... James was a huge influence on on old wounds and and on me. So that's not that's not a secret. <laughs> I was just gonna say, you know, like was is it kind of you know I don't know how I know you got to do an astronomical amount of hours uh, before you can you know get your license, I believe. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I don't know how far into that you are at this point, but I'm 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 I'm, I'm oh. almost done. Okay. I have such a short amount of time left in school as soon as i get home from this tour that we're on now I'll, I'll be finishing up and then it'll just be me and the gang back on the road <laughs> <laughs> so what has what has cosmetology school and what has that whole process taught you and what have or and i guess what have you learned from it that you've been able to maybe apply in your other in the music career definitely patience you know the whole the whole the whole school thing is a very long and frustrating scenario you don't actually learn how to do hair in the school um and i guess that would apply to the the music side is you don't really learn a lot of the things that you might interpret growing up you know from watching your favorite band's music videos or listening to their records, you know, you might not think about all of the time and all of the hard work that it really is. It, you know, I, I'll tell my boss or my friends back at home that don't really understand what it is that I do when I go on tour, but it's, it is a job and, it, and it's not an easy one. And 
you're not getting the proper rests, you're not taking care of your body. It's just the name of the touring game. So having patience on the road, I would say that's like the double, my double life is I need to have patience in school and I need to have patience on the road. <laughs> what uh, What's a trend in hair? I asked James this and it was kind of an interesting answer I got. What's a trend in, in hair or styling in general that you're surprised to see coming back? Hmm. I'd say oh, men wearing their hair forward, doing I, I I call it like the European style <laughs> right now. Okay. Where they they comb their hair forward and they and they have little bangs. It's, yeah. it's a very it's such a very like I'm trying to Beatles. Think, like, oh, like see, Be- I was thinking like, like Nick Lachey, like style. Oh uh, no no no! It's like <laughs> very like European, very. English style, uh, like the Beatles or Oasis, men having like bangs. I feel like that's a very trendy thing right now. I don't think I've seen that yet. No, you will. No, I'm sure. I will. I mean, that's like, you know, being 34, it's like yeah. I'm seeing – it's weird that like, you know, having talked to some people, like, you know, talking to Jay Gordon from Orgy and so forth, and it's like – Wow. You know – I remember when Orgy was cool, then it turned into a new metal was cool, then it was a dirty word, and if you liked it, you had terrible taste in music. So now yeah. it's like coming back, and like some of these bands are kind of becoming back in vogue. And it's one of those things where it's like, it's interesting to see the clothing style it's the same as well. So I'm almost like, all right, so all the shit that I was into, like my in middle school to high school is about ready to be cool again so i guess like i should bring back my basketball jerseys and and all that kind of shit (laughs) you're gonna bring back your jenkos uh you know i was never i've always been the jeans and t-shirt kind of guy it's always like a band t-shirt and and whatever it's just a varying length like whether it's you know large or extra large or skin tight sure (laughs) (laughs) every everything comes back everything comes back and that's just that's just how it is and uh, last uh, two questions for you. Uh, I realized the other day that you are not on Twitter anymore, but where can people find you and order the band online? The band is on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. I have an Instagram. That's how people can reach me. Um, but yeah, the band has every form of social media. Uh, but I'm just on Instagram. Have you found not having all the extra forms of social media to be a little more liberating. It definitely is more peaceful, more liberating. Um, Twitter is just a bunch of people talking nonsense all the time. And I kind of got fed up with that. And so I deleted it. (laughs) (laughs) I definitely noticed I went to send a DM to you the other day. And then I was like, since the user's not found, what the fuck? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Handle there, Failed Design, was actually a, an album or a song on this uh, this album. So I was like really excited to hear that because I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, a name I kind of gave myself in the hospital. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I used it as my uh, my Twitter handle, but it is a name of a song on the on the newest album. And then lastly, I always like to end these out with a song. So what would you like me to play it out to? Hmm, I guess let's let's end this. All right. Let's let's go out with the the last of the famous International Playboys by by Morrissey. All right. Well, Kevin, thank you very much for taking the time to do this thank and you uh, so enjoy much. the rest of the tour. Uh, you're out until the end of uh, basically November 25th with CU yep. Space Cowboy and Chamber. And yes. uh, what does next year have uh, in store for you guys? It's open ended, but we will play with whomever, whenever. We just want to play to kids who would not normally come see our band, and uh, we just want to be on the road for as long as possible. Awesome! Again, thank you very much, and uh, really enjoy this. John, thank you very much. I appreciate you. You yeah. have a good one. You too. So that was my chat with Kevin from Old Wounds, and I gotta say, um, as you as you heard me say, the uh, 
the new album link didn't really work for me, so I had a very limited knowledge of this new record that's that's out now. Uh, and if you haven't heard it, go check it out. Glow, it's already out. Came out this past Friday. Um, it's a killer. It's it's actually really fucking good. Um, yeah. And you know the things that I liked about the the suffering spirit, I thought you know it was just a crushingly heavy record. And, you know, it, it, I know this sounds really weird as a, like a, a fan of metal and like hardcore and stuff like that. I feel like, you know, the thing I love about the Suffering Spirit is like, and they do it a little bit on, on Glow too, is those like dissonant like panic chords. Oh, yeah, dude. That were like the earmark or the benchmark basically of, of any good hardcore songs like in the late 90s, early 2000s. And something that, you know, Unearth was bringing back too on that, uh, their new record that's coming out. But I think the thing that I love about Glow you know, now that I've had time to hear it is the fact that, you know, it's, you know, like Kevin said, like it, it deals with a lot of shit that the band went through over the last, you know, three years since they, the making of the, the suffering spirit. And, you know, the member changes, like, you know, the story about their drummer, their now drummer, who was the guitar player before, like, to me, it's like, it's almost, you know, I know people can be ancillary musicians and be talented at a lot of things, but if you're not passionate about that thing and you're only playing it because it's what allows you to do the thing you want to do, then, you know, eventually that's going to kind of come through. And, you know, like Kevin was saying, like, dude hit, like, dude loves playing drums, hits so hard, but he's technical and all that. And it's like, because that's what he, that's the instrument he loves playing. And to me, when you listen to Glow, like, it's a band that everyone is where they're supposed to be making the music that they're supposed to be making. And I think that's the thing that's really nice about this record to me and has me really fucking excited about old wounds from this point forward is just, I, th- I think we're just scratching the surface of how great this band can be. And this is the first step in that direction. It's definitely a direction that I um, was a little surprised by at first. And I haven't gotten to li- my link worked, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Bragger. Uh, that being said, uh, it was definitely different, but it was more growth. I know that's like really turning into a trope now. Like, oh my god, the new record is so much more mature than the old record. But I would hope four albums into your career, honestly, I would hope every record there's some growth. Yeah, and I mean, I unless I, you unless you want to be Slayer. Well, honestly, like you know, Dan, I think this is where your podcast and what you do on it would really this question I think gives a fair assessment on this. But like your podcast, basically, you listen to a whole band's discography. So if a band's career has lasted anywhere from five to thirty years, you know, you're getting to see the growth very quickly because you're listening to these things in a, in a sequential order. Rapid right. fire. So, I yeah. mean, how, how often do you find that when you're listening to a band, how often do you really see bands not really growing? It's not as often as you would think. Like, as much as as much as I say it's a trope or whatever, there sure, there are bands out there that, that are going to always sound the same. But, like, you can even take a band like, and like I said, Slayer is probably the best example. But, I mean, even realistically, Slayer did try doing some different things. Uh, over time they just found that their old stuff is what sold the most and that's what they went for um but that's a super long career but i would say most of the bands um there's kind of two types of growth there's the bands that have a really progressive growth where they're basically feeding you little samples of where they're gonna go um in earlier releases or there's bands that just throw themselves out in the middle of the road and whatever comes out comes out and (laughs) it might be so vastly different than what anybody's used to um, you know, one of, one of the biggest examples of that, uh, would have been, uh, Norma Jean on their anti-mother record, because before that Norma Jean was just known as a band that made a lot of noise. Right. And then they put out this record called the Annie mother, which is like a, like a heart, like a gritty hard rock record, but it's like mostly like clean vocals and stuff. And, um, I don't think their fan base was like really ready for that. And, uh, but then they kind of, they kind of incorporated elements of the older stuff. They're like, okay, maybe people aren't on board with that yet, but, uh, they're an example of just that, like, we're just going to throw it out there and see what people think. Um, so, I mean, there, there's two types of bands like that, but I can, I could definitely say that with maybe one or two exceptions that really most bands grow and sometimes they don't grow in a direction that I appreciate, but they do grow. 
they they grow and change over time and um you know i i think most musicians are always trying to outdo themselves and part of outdoing yourself is is by stretching out where your boundaries are you know like i wouldn't have expected a band like old wounds to do anything like super melodic you know um but you know they're they're kind of getting there and uh that's that's a new interesting sound to me um and i and i actually i actually like it when heavier bands go melodic you know what i mean like they're a little <laughs> bit more not like super melodic like i don't contrary to what you think john i don't want every band to do what afi did uh, <laughs> but you know uh because yeah i'm definitely more of the old camp of afi but i am not uh, um but there is there is some credence though to the idea of they are writing songs now instead of just stringing a whole bunch of parts together you know and that's that's what you guys have talked about in the interview and the part that i kind of got the most out of is that you know um when i was an early when i was a young hardcore fan i just wanted to hear the noise you know what i mean i was just in it for the metal scraping on metal sound and you know um the angry voice and all that but i guess as i get older it's nice to hear bands grow with me and uh, it doesn't matter, you know, there, there's going to be somebody that feels that way about every band. You know, every band is somebody's favorite band. And so if you start off with a band that you just wanted to hear them to be heavy, but then you get a little bit older, you know, you kind of start wanting to hear songs that you're going to actually remember. Because mm-hmm. like a lot of the early metalcore stuff that I liked was very thrown together. Like uh, I was listening to a Symphony in Peril album the other day. And I remember loving that so much when it came out. And like I was like listening to it, and I was like, okay, they play this riff for 15 seconds, and then they play this other riff for 15 seconds, and then they go into this like chaotic breakdown kind of thing, and then you know they they string it like the song isn't any anywhere where it began. By the time you get to the end, it might only be two minutes, and you've gone through like 15, 16 riff changes, and so like that's not actual songwriting. No. So like to hear people. Yeah, you know, to hear a band that was predominantly more aggressive start actually writing songs like real actual compositions where, you know, a song will have a particular theme that runs throughout uh, and that sort of thing. Um, that That's kind of where the gold is. And it, it is nice seeing that most bands are going to strive to hit that. And I think Old Wounds is is definitely uh, is definitely on that path, man. I you know I definitely found um, Glow to be pretty entertaining overall. And normally a hardcore record, I have to be in the mood to listen to a hardcore record. And this one's just kind of like, oh, okay, I could listen to this pretty much anytime. I'm interested to see. I mean, like we were saying, I, I think Kevin has made it no bones about his influences. Uh, and I would even say the song he ended up picking, as you heard, um, kind of speaks to one of them. And, I mean, it's like when your influences range from, I mean, I'm sure Kevin has a, a ton of, like, hardcore influences as well. I mean, you couldn't be. Obviously. Yeah. I was going to say, couldn't be in this scene and, and not. But, I mean, it's like when, you know, you have Davey Havoc, James Hart, Chris from Motionless and White, and, you know, Mortisy. It's like, I can't help but think that eventually you're going to have some pretty more melodic leanings. I mean. Every single one of those bands, Motionless and White, have kind of started having more emphasis on good songs and melody and so forth. Uh, 18 Visions, definitely by the end of, before they put out, you know, their most recent one, they kind of went more like kind of cock rock a little bit with yeah, an edge. Yeah. Um, you look at AFI, definitely has explored the furthest sides of melody on their most last couple of records. So, I mean, it's it's not surprising to see him do that and i mean you look at and again i'm breaking up this band you, i should start putting a fucking dollar in the digital tip jar every time i say this band's name but i mean you look at a band like every time i die they started doing like when it kind of kills me when when you have these like hardcore purists who are like if it's not you know kind of like you were saying a couple minutes ago like just discordant noise and i i don't i can't handle it but i mean it's like when people tell me that Last Night in Town is their favorite Every Time I Die record. I'm like, get fucked, dude. There's no way. There's no way you listen to that and you're like, this is the best it ever got. Right, yeah. Like, there's no way. There's no way. And to me, it's like, you know, I I mean, like, the, there are songs on this record, on this new Old Wounds record that kind of had me how feeling like I did, like, 
when the new low teens came out and I'm like, holy shit, map change. Like you got to hear this. Like it's heavy, but like it's, it's, it is literally heavy because of the, the, the way it sounds, but like it's heavy in a way because of like thematically it's heavy, lyrically it's heavy. Like there are other things that add to the, the weight of the song and there's so much of that on this record. And like, it just, like I said, it's exciting to see a band kind of take some chances and for them to be done so well. And, you know, like I said, I think, you know, have the band getting going through everything they did and kind of coming out the other end and, and being able to make the record that they really wanted to make, I think, speaks for itself. And to me, you know, we've we've echoed this sentiment so many times already, but it's just it has me excited for Old Wounds. It has me excited to see this band live, to hear these songs live and kind of going back for a minute to, you know, the Crones talk. It's like. I I wasn't necessarily expecting the conversation to lean so heavily on that one topic, but I was yeah. pleasantly surprised to find of how much, you know, from them being on tour right now and having kids come up and talk to them about it, like, oh, you know, like, uh, you know, just that whole thing and, and having, you know, Kevin in, it in inspiring some lyrics for Kevin. I mean, Fuck, man! Can you imagine having two two feet or over two feet of your intestines taken out and hearing that like if you didn't come in today, you're you are gonna die to like any time probably. Yeah, that's crazy to me. And I I want to clarify something I said in the in the intro. Um, maybe I kind of came off a little hot on that, you know, being like, well, if you don't come forward with your disease or tell people about it, or you're just the the things that you tell yourself. Um, I realized that may have sounded a little bit insensitive, and I just wanted to re clarify that. What I meant really was just that people should come forward and it'd be nice if we lived in a world where people didn't, you know, wouldn't judge you on something like that. And I was only just making the comparison that, you know, in a lot of ways, if you, if somebody weren't to come forward, you know, um, sometimes it, people can be less understanding if they just think that somebody's being unreliable versus, you know, actually having an actual issue. Um, and, you know, I just didn't want to sound insensitive to that, you know, especially after hearing hearing that whole conversation and <laughs> and and, you know, really just feeling just feeling bad. Like, yeah, I couldn't imagine having to have, you know, like you need to come in right now. We need to cut out, you know, this much of, of your intestines like, oh, my God, like that. Uh, I can't even imagine that. I couldn't even begin to understand what that feels like. And uh, it's a it's a really good testament to the fact that you know, that there still is a new album that music is still being made. Yeah. Cause like, I don't know about you, man, but like if I had that, those kind of issues, I probably wouldn't do anything. I think in light of the heaviness of kind of, you know, just the, the last few minutes of us talking here, I think, uh, it's a, as good a place as any is really to, uh, kind of end this episode. So, um, if you would like to follow Old Wounds, uh, you can follow them across all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Old Wounds NJ, short for New Jersey, if you can't figure that out. Um, if you'd like to follow Kevin, you can find him at, only on Instagram at Kevin X I A V A R O N I. So basically Kevin X and his last name. Um, go pick up stream, whatever, uh, old wounds, new record glow came out this past Friday. So you're still in the first week. Uh, first week numbers are huge. Um, uh, basically this is how, Basically, this is how bands uh, are able to determine what kind of tours they get, where they get to tour, and so forth. And um, it's it's a big thing. Um, I don't think I need to explain that to anybody who listens to music or listens to podcasts with music people. Uh, first week numbers are huge, so go support those dudes. Uh, they're a great band, great group of guys, and uh, I know I personally want to see them continue to tour and to tour all over. So stream the record. Uh, again, Glow, it is out now via Good Fight Music. And uh, for the next uh, two weeks or so, you can catch them on the road still with uh, CU Space Cowboy and Chamber. And uh, if you would like to keep up with our show partner, Moshpit Nation, you can find them at moshpitnation.com. Facebook is Moshpit Nation West Capital MI. And Twitter and Instagram are simply Moshpit Nation. And if you would like to keep up with our show sponsor, The Bean Bastard, you can over at TheBeanBastard.com or follow them on Twitter and Instagram simply at The Bean Bastard. Dan, where can people follow you? You can follow me on Twitter at DiscussMetalDan. 
you can follow me on Facebook under just plain old Daniel Terry. And you can find my other podcast at DiscussMetal.com. And if you would like to keep up with all things the podcast, you can on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Johnson Title Podcast. Tweet at us at Johnson Title Pod and email us at JohnsonTitlePod at gmail.com. And we are going to end this episode as we always do with a song. And as you heard Kevin pick, he wanted me to play it out to a, a pretty classic Morrissey song. The last of the famous international playboys. Uh, I was thinking actually after doing the interview and kind of sitting on it for the last little bit and playing the song, I think Old Wound should cover either a Smiths or Morrissey song. I think that needs to happen. Why not just cover a whole album? Copyright reasons? <laughs> That's fine. Just release it for free. It's, it's not a big deal. Fair enough. Just just do it. I didn't look up any information on whether you can do that or not, but just do it. Fair enough. Just tell them to dance that it was fine. <laughs> and uh, with that, we are going to uh, play it out to that song, and we will talk to you guys next time. <laughs>